Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC 3D. Today we're going to be talking about our new Sharp CNC Commander software and have a look at some of its features. The Sharp CNC Commander tool that we've put together um, is, is really designed for beginners who are sort of getting started out in CNC, um, but it does offer a lot of features that uh, a lot of the more experienced CNC users will enjoy. The software does support GRBL 1.1 and greater controllers and also supports our new Nighthawk and UCARV CNC controllers as well. So we'll have a look at some of the features that we've got in the software here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect up to a standard USB based GRBL controller. You do have the option of choosing to connect to a network based controller as well. You can just put the IP address and the relevant port into this drop down. Uh, but today we're going to be connecting to the COM port. We currently have our controller on COM17. So let's just go ahead and connect to it. Now the first thing that you'll notice is it's retrieved all of the details for the controller including the current machine position. We'll go through some of these functions and buttons along here. So the first button that we've got as you can see we currently have a job position um, which is basically a random location. We're just going to hit the zero job button here and then that will zero out the current job position ready for you to start a new job. Alternatively what you can do is you can click on the set job button and you can actually put in here exactly what you'd like to make those values. So we'll just go in and put some numbers in here and we'll just set the job coordinates and as you can see it's gone through and it's set our job to these current positions. Now if you want to you can always just zero the job or you can always ask it to go to zero on the X, Y and Z and the machine will travel there based on the information that you've put in here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a basic jog operation. So you've got your Y plus, your Y minus, you'll tell it how far you want it to travel here in the distance and the speed you want it to travel at. This side over here refers specifically to the X and the Y axes and these numbers here refer to the Z axis specifically. We have kept these separate and there have been some cases where users have tried to jog the Y 100 millimeters and have accidentally hit the Z instead. So we've made these numbers a little bit smaller to minimize any possible issues. Of course you can just put any number you'd like in here and choose the speed at which you, you would like it to travel at as well and it will save these settings upon exit so the next time you relaunch the program it'll retain what the last values were in these fields. Now let's say for example you are in the middle of a job you can choose to just pause that job at any point as you can see our status down here has changed to a hold option you can then hit resume and it will go back to normal again. Um, you've got your limit and trigger switches here so at the moment these are greyed out because we currently have our limit switches disabled in the firmware and um, we've got our, our current status of our probe and our current status of our door as well. So what we'll do we'll have a look at some of the features that we have in here as you can see on the right hand side here the first tab that we've got is our run job tab so this is very simple you can basically just browse to a file and then you can choose to run this job. So the job will eventually run through. What we'll do is we'll just stop that job for now. And as you can see, we've triggered an alarm status, which is very common when you stop a job midway. So we'll just hit unlock and then go back to normal and we're ready to resume normal operation. Now the next tab we have here is our macros tab. So macros are a series of commands that you can save that you might want to execute at any time when you're not running a job. Um, we've made it very easy for you to be able to save these values here. You can simply create a new macro and you can save the details for it. You can choose to record a new macro. You can choose to obviously if you make any modifications update this current saved macro or you can write your own macro in here and save it as a new one and of course you can choose to clear the text that's in the macro data section. Once you create a new macro, so if we copy this data here, we'll just clear this text, we'll paste this in here, so enter a name for your macro, so we'll call it test2 and then 
you'll notice now we have our full macro here and we have the macro that we've just saved. If you wish to delete that macro, you can just hit delete and that macro has been deleted as well. All of the data is saved in a local file for you so it's very easy for you to access later. Now we'll move on to the offsets and probing tab. As you can see you've got all of your standard offsets for GRBL here. You can set the current position for G28 and G30 and when, once you make changes to this, so say we zero this, we can just hit to update the general offsets and then that will reset those back to zero for you. Now what we've done is we've had a look at the way that probing operates on GRBL and a lot of people have made macros for this. We've actually made this a very easy process. Just before we can run the probing wizard though, we do need to zero the current job coordinates. As you can see, they're now zeroed over here. Now, we need to put in our end mill diameter. So say for example, if we have a four mil end mill, and then it'll ask you to choose what type of probe you actually have. So if you've got a standard Z-axis probe, it will only give you the details for setting the Z-axis. So you can actually choose in here the, the probe dimension. So if your probe is 10 millimeters high, then we'll put 10 millimeters into the probe dimensions. And then the probe travel here is how far it will allow it to travel while trying to probe. So we'll just leave those settings in there as standard. You can also choose to use an XYZ based probe, in which case you'll have the same options for the X and for the Y axis as well for you to put those details in there. So what we'll do is you can just hit the probing cycle. We don't currently have a probe connected up to this. We're just running a, a, a theoretical here on this video. But what it will do is it will do a rough probe first and then it will do a fine probe at a much slower speed just to minimize the chance of any deflection in the end mill as it approaches the actual uh, probe itself. So that's a real simple one that we've set up. That's an automated process and probably very handy for quite a few people. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the profiles option. Now the profiles here are basically full setting profiles for GRBL and you can choose to save these settings or you can choose to upload the settings directly to your machine so in this case we can just choose one of our sharp CNC screwdriver factory settings we can send that through and as you can see the data has been successfully uploaded now we'll have a look at the measurements tab so in here you can choose to um, set up your your axes and to set up your micro stepping just to get your measurements right. Now there's a couple of ways that you can choose to do this. We've actually set this up to suit a standard sharp CNC kit or a work B CNC kit. So you can basically choose that it's a screw driven machine, what your micro stepping is and it will automatically adjust your steps per millimeter based on the factory settings. You can of course choose to modify this at any point by choosing the manual override option and say setting this to 99.8 instead of 100. If you're not sure how to calculate your distances, we have added this really handy wizard in here. You can hit run test. And basically what we do is you create enough space for you to be able to travel 200 millimeters. So you have to jog your machine into position. And once it is into position, you can go to the second step we suggest adding a pencil on there. There are many other ways you can do this, but this was a really simple way that we thought users would be able to do it. Um, once you've got that done, go to the next step and you get it to run the test on here. And then at the bottom here, you will measure the value and then enter in here. So say for example, instead of getting 200 millimeters, you got 199.8. And when you do your x-axis test, so when you run the test, let's say you got 198.7. When you hit complete test, it automatically will update these values here, just to make sure that 200 millimeters is in fact 200 millimeters. Now we haven't added this feature for the z-axis. You can obviously choose what you'd like to make these values. Um, you can do a manual override on here. So we'll just delete that out, set that back to 200. 
and when you're happy, you can commit the settings to the controller by hitting Update Measurement Settings. Now that that's done, we'll move on to our Axes tab. Now GRBL does have some features built in, um, which gives you the ability to invert your axes, so the Y axis, the X axis and the Z axis. We've simplified this process. If you notice that an axis does not correspond to the navigational buttons over here on the left hand side, you can choose to invert those. So, for example, if you're standing at the front of the machine and you hit Y+, you would expect the gantry to move away from you. If it moves towards you, then you can simply just choose to invert the Y axis and when you're ready, you can just update axis directions and it will do that automatically. Now when you're having a look at your accelerations and your maximums, this is where you can choose the maximum feed rate for a particular axis. So we're going to set both of these to 5000. Let's make this one 1000. So the fastest the Z axis can possibly move will be 1000 and the fastest the X axis will move will be 5000 and the Y axis 5000. When you're happy with that, you can just hit update acceleration and maximums. And then we'll move on to our peripherals tab. So in our peripherals tab here, this is where you can set your homing feed, homing seek, basically all of the standard settings that you get within GRBL. You can choose to enable homing or you can choose to disable homing. You can choose to enable or disable soft limits. Of course, if you choose to enable soft limits, you do need to enable homing as well. So you can't do both of those. You can also choose to enable your hard limits and choose the type of connection that, that your hard limits have, whether they're normally open or normally closed. Now, with your soft limits, this is where you can actually set them in here. So 1500, 1500 millimeters, 200 millimeters for your Z. As these are theoretical values, you do need to be careful what values you do choose for that. You'll also notice we have our probe settings in here. The probe does support both normally closed and normally open modes of operation. So we can just choose, once you're done, to update all of these settings in here. Now we've got our cornering settings. So in here is basically, there's, there's quite a bit of information about this already uh, on the GRBL website. If you do click on these links, they will take you through to the GRBL documentation for it. Um, basically, you shouldn't really need to change these settings for your machine, but in the event that you do, we do recommend just clicking on these links and reading a little bit more about it. But the standard settings should be perfectly fine for you. Once you're happy with the settings you have in there, or if you've made any changes, just hit update cornering settings, and that will automatically update on the controller for you. Uh, the effects are immediate, so you can re-attempt to run your job then straight away. Now the operations tab up here, this is basically for GRBL 1.1 and greater controllers that have a special function for doing laser operation. So you can choose to set it into laser mode, which will optimize the M4 command to be a, a, a bit smoother through arcs and avoid burning so if it comes to a tight point it will taper off the actual laser power slightly as it goes through that arc just to minimize any sort of unnecessary burning on those and of course if you are in spindle mode then set it to spindle mode and then you should be good to go now with the signal processing this basically relates to the types of controllers that you have here um, the step idle delay is probably one of the most important settings Depending on your machine and your setup, you want to set this step idle delay to 255, which is the maximum, which means that when your motors are not moving, they will have a constant holding torque on there. Once you're happy with those settings, just hit update operation settings and you should be good to go. Now the connections tab here specifically relates to our new Nighthawk series controllers, which are being released very shortly. They allow you to configure the mode of operation, whether it be wireless, Bluetooth, access point, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, or I should say other Wi-Fi connection settings. Um, you can go through and set all of these up if you want to. This is disabled by default because we're not currently connected to a Nighthawk controller. So that pretty much goes through the software that we've put together. 
Um, we do encourage everyone to give it a try, download it. Um, we are aiming at adding some creation tools which are already underway. There'll be a little button which will be appearing here, which is called Create, that will allow people to actually make some projects and do some really cool things. Uh, for example, the ability to turn a laser-based job into a plasma job very easily and convert some SVG files into G-code files for you, optimized G-code files. So that's it for now, guys. Um, give it a try, see what you think, and hopefully we'll have a wonderful tool in the future. Thank you.